Bradley, another great freshman for them. Luke Von Bray is fighting some illness issues. So, Ludier Elgin-Leye will... They've had some droughts in their scoring that they've got to overcome. They've got to get the ball to James and Doyle in those stretches. And they got to rebound. When they rebound, they win games. James wins the tap. All right, you look at the numbers. Bradley's best win of the season was Loyola's worst loss. That was a home loss by the Ramblers in Chicago. James only had seven points in that game, Kevin. In the road victory by Loyola in Peoria, James had 17. He is the X factor, as we mentioned. They go to him early. He's at the free throw line to start this game for the Ramblers. The Australian Colin Barker is called for the tournament's first foul. And it puts the aforementioned Montel James to the line. 78%. He had 18 makes at the line in a terrific game that he had against Indiana State when he had 28 points and 14 rebounds against the Sycamores. Well, he's shooting 78% this year. Last year he shot 54%. Tremendous improvement by Montel James in the offseason. And the first point of the tournament belongs to Montel James. And a little pressure shown by Porter Mosier, a little point press from three quarters. And Brian Worrell said he expected to see that because he had so many freshmen changing defenses, causes them some issues, makes those freshmen think. Again, Bradley, 6'9 freshman, Luke Van Bray. Not starting the game, dealing with some sickness. Nice dribble drive, good take. Antoine Pittman finds the alley to the basket. Well, this Bradley team can stretch you out, and they have guys that can attack. Pittman being one of them. Turner can't be left alone. Dante Ingram. And James swats it out and then relocates. The repost after the swat out, a fantastic play by Montel James. Oh, big time. Back-to-back -back possessions, and the Ramblers make the Braves pay. Kevin, when you're coaching, how many times do you tell a guy to repost? And then for Richardson to find the guy that reposted. Well, and you gain real estate when you do that, Mitch. Throw it out, dive back in there, take up some real estate. Just what James did in that last play. Lodier Agunleye tries to create an out of bounds to Loyola. Great move inside. You mentioned this, the repost. And Richardson finds James. Now, Brian World did not want to double James in the first half, but he may have to order than he wants to. I don't know how sick Juan Bray is, but it took him all of a minute and 20 seconds to get into the game. He's 6'10", can stretch it with the three ball. Also, the Valley All-Freshman team. Keep an eye on number 13, Luke Van Bray for the Bradley. Bradley with the numbers and quick into in. An outstanding shot by Ronnie Suggs at the top of the square. A real talent, Suggs. Left-handed, long, like these other freshmen. He can get to the basket. And Dante Ingram able to create. Let's look at Suggs in transition. Well, Suggs Jr., he can take it himself from end to end. Look at this play. Tucks it in. Little kiss off the window for the freshman. This is a talented freshman group, Mitch. Ingram, the sophomore from one of those famous high schools in all of America as it pertains to basketball, Chicago Simeon. There's been a few players from that particular school, <laughs> including Derek Rose, Jabari Parker. Ingram, an outstanding foul shooter, 82%. But, 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 he missed three free throws in the home loss to Bradley in Chicago. And remember, the Ramblers lost by just a digit in that game. Thomas knocked down a big three ball to win that. Ooh, Suggs again splits right through two defenders. And Ronnie Suggs twice with inside dribble plays for Bradley. Left-handers are always difficult to guard. Suggs taking advantage, splitting the seams on the Loyola defense. Milton Doyle now into the game, trying to create space, and there's a bonus, too. Julius Rajala.
the fin the Finnish native doesn't score much in fact he only gets two per game and gets the tip in there for the Ramblers we saw Doyle take that float to the baseline that's the other factor in this game Milton Doyle has to step his game up another great take to the rim by Lodier Ogunleye he had 18 against Loyola in the loss in Peoria and Turk gets fouled as Pittman well, Bradley is getting to the rim, They're getting in the seams of the defense of Loyola. Do you see Sugg split it there? And then Lotier Ogunlele, he gets right down Main Street and kisses one off the glass. Porter Moses is going to have to tighten it up at the defensive end. Milton Doyle steps out. Kelly Self all over. Really good crew working this game. Kelly Self, John Higgins, and Mark Whitehead. Now again, Loyola with a little pressure. And they'll go back to a man-to-man. -man. This is trying to take this young Bradley team out of any type of rhythm and flow. The Bradley's killing these guys on just the inside dribble. Loyola recovers here, but the skip pass for Pittman, and he drains a three. A great start by the young Bradley Braves. Pittman just 28% for the year from three, and the Braves lead by four. The freshman stats for this Bradley team is a little deceiving because these guys have improved. As Ron Wilson said, the heavy net guys gain weight during the season. As this youth movement moves forward. Kirk usually good from three, missing that. Bradley last in the league in three-pointers made percentage and made per game. And the Braves have not missed a shot yet. Another inside dribble and a foul. Again, we get to split the defense. Bradley knocking in the three ball and getting to the rim. Best league at putting on tournaments, not just Arch Madness. They've hosted Final Fours here on both the men's and the women's side in this great city. Well, and Arch Madness has that feel of a regional tournament. It does. Doug Elgin got that feeling long ago in one of the great postseason tournaments in the country. Well attended, and you're right, it has the feel of an NCAA regional. Dante Thomas, 73% at the line. He beat Loyola in Chicago. He hit the game-winning three with 11 seconds to go in Bradley's best win of Brian Wardle's first season. And you have to think Bradley has confidence they can win this game because they did split with Loyola. They won in Chicago, dropped one at home. But Mitch, they're perfect five for five from the field. They have gotten into the interior of Loyola's defense. You also have a box and one right here, Kevin. They're box and one on Milton Doyle. So Jeff Kiki White, a Peoria native, he plays for Loyola, could not complete the drive to the basket. Yeah, Kiki White, father, played for the Braves. Bradley has yet to miss a shot. Five of five from the field. Three of three at the foul line. Not indicative of a five in 2016. Well, yeah, I admire their ball movement. Look at how quick they're moving around. Then they're attacking the gaps. First miss. And guess who gets the rebound? The third leading rebounder in the Valley, Montel James. Well, we've talked about what he's done down this last stretch. Has elevated. Last year on the all-newcomer team, this year voted second team MVC, Montel James. They stay in the box and one of the straight man here. They're straight man this time. And we'll change up Brian Wolf, probably one possession out of that timeout. That box and one. Three to shoot. James has got to pull this. And gets the roll and the bucket. Montel James right now is carrying Loyola University Chicago. Five of the nine Rambler points. Well, Von Vre dug down but then left again. James, great patience, split the gap and able to score again. And there's your turnover that's been the bugaboo for the Braves. White dishes. James forcing. And Bradley does a great job at the rim and a frustration foul. The second of the game on Milton Doyle, the Kansas transfer. Well, Montel James has started off like a house on fire. Great post position, early footwork. Takes his time, catches it and chins it, waits for the defense to react, and then splits to the middle.
James carrying the Ramblers. We are Eagle Eye video replays a presentation of Eagle Bank and Trust Company, the official bank of the Valley, and proud to support Valley student athletes. In fact, they were honored the Valley student athlete of the year at men's basketball today at our banquet as Reed Timmer of Drake won that award. Eagle Bank, where a student's financial future begins. How good is Montel James at getting his trunk down? But there's a good job by Colin Barker. The, I used to call Jamal Howard of Wichita State the Tasmanian Devil back in the early 2000s. Now Barker gets that because he's from Tasmania. <laughs> and a good hustle play by Earl Peterson playing with an injury. But I ask you about Montel James in that replay. How good is he at getting his lower body lower than his defender? Well, on that last play, he waited for the ball to come back to him, stepped in, took up the space. Excellent patience by the senior Montel James. And we said, Mitch, he's a tough matchup because he's really a four-man. He has extreme quickness. He's a mid-post guy. He doesn't necessarily get you on the block like on that last play. He'll post you at about 10 feet, turn and face. His junior college teammate at Coffeyville Community College in Kansas. Earl Peterson missing his first free throw. Last year, it was the MVP of their CBI National Championship run. And Earl got hurt in that Wichita State game, did not play against Drake in the overtime loss by Loyola and Des Moines for Earl. A little plate in his shoe. He's toughing it out today. Six point lead for the Braves. And now they throw the ball away. You mentioned they are last in the league in turnover margin. A beautiful start, but now turnovers in two of the last three possessions. And Brian Wilson, we have some gaps, but we'll get loose with the ball. And it leads to points off turnovers, open court issues with the other team. Now another box and one on Turk, it appears. They're face guarding him. The other four are playing zone. That leaves Ingram open for this. And he's robbed at the rim. Well, they've ran that twice now. It's with success, the box and one. Turk was a concern for Brian Wardle. Did not want Turk to get going. James owning the boards. As Pittman testing fate, he made a three and then missing that one. Now, Loyola has tightened up the defense a little bit. They've taken away those seams. We saw Bradley penetrate early in this game and get to the rim. And Brent, Brian Wardle's going to be happy because Bradley's been good on this end. Now Ingham with a point blanker, and that won't go in. So Loyola's showing some nerves here early. Well, five red jerseys in the paint, rebounding that missed shot, and five white jerseys heading back to the defensive end. Nobody in the offensive glass for the Ramblers. Loyola shooting just 25%. Almost a turnover. Lodier, Oganlea, but missing that one from the corner. And there's an injured. It is Turk who took a shot. Devin Turk took a shot. And they're not going to go to the monitor and take a look at it. So basketball play and a Bradley press here. So we've seen Bridal Mortal show a bunch of different defenses here. In the first eight minutes of this game. Braves on a 9-4 run. You see a little 1-2-2 two, two zone now. They got out of the box and one with Turk and Doyle on the bench. No need for the box and one. That's the guy you better find if you're in a zone. Richardson is the best three-point shooter in the Valley percentage-wise. However, he was just two of five against Bradley in the regular season from three-point range. Well, let me take that statement back. <laughs> if you're going to box and one, you may have to find Ben Richardson. The double on the Tasmanian Devil. But a good hustle play. Cadero Bell trying with an extra pass. One to shoot. And a three-second violation on Luke Von Bray. Richardson, the top three-point shooter percentage-wise. Look at a little misdirection action. Ball fake. Finds him in the left corner. Excellent offense by the Ramblers. 
Richardson a winner. His high school teams in Kansas City, 94 and 6. And his old high school teammate, Clayton Custer, started at Iowa State, will be eligible next year for Loyola University of Chicago. Now, Mitch Bradley start off red hot, 5 of 5. They've been 1 for 4 since with some turnovers. With Lodier, Ogunleye gets the open floor. And Von Gray misses the dunk and no foul. Boy, had a nice three on one. The Braves got to finish. And now a foul on Barker on the opposite end. Love this tournament. There's so many opportunities for fans, including Metro Transit. They have an all inclusive five day fan pass, just $23.50. The fan pass, valid, unlimited riding from today all the way through March 6 on Metro Link, Metro Bus, and the downtown trolley during Arch Madness 2016. Get your fan pass at metrostore.org. Now, Turk is back in for Loyola. But Milton Doyle on the bench with two. Tom Ackman talked about that big bench scoring from the Ramblers. Milton Doyle on the bench. They sit for the rest of the half. That really hurts that bench production. Suggs, and he gets an open three. Ronnie Suggs, seven early in this game. Impressed by the ball movement and spacing by the Bradley Braves. And again, the Braves are not good three-point shooters. Suggs was only 26% during the regular season from three. But it's impressive what Bradley's been able to do defensively early in this game against Loyola. They've changed some things up, given different looks, rebounded exceptionally well. Von Bray, who can hit threes. In fact, he had the most threes in the Valley of any freshman, but maybe a little quick with that trigger. Also plus Bradley's ability to get back and set their defense. James will try a three, and so the Ramblers a little anxious here in the first half in their looks. Yeah, James is 3 of 16 from the arc. Not the shot that Porter Moser wanted. Pittman sets up Suggs. Suggs with a heat check. Jeff White trying to find something for Richardson in that same corner. We just hit a three. But a nice recovery by Cadero Bell. It's been a struggle for the Ramblers here on offense, but credit Bradley. They've changed defenses, and the effort is there, which is a real credit to Brian Wardle and his staff. Oh, Brian Wardle talked about developing the culture and instilling that you have to play hard every play. We talked about this the youngest team in America, 10 freshmen on this squad. You come from Green Bay, it's a pretty good, I mean, Dick and Tony Bennett out of that program. Richardson, a contested three. Wait a minute. Before that, a turnover on the Ramblers. And Brian Wells says when they go recruit, they call it CDR. They compete, defend, and rebound. Those are the three qualities he's looking for in his players. Same formula he used to build that Green Bay program. He's going to carry it over here for the Bradley Braves. These Bradley freshmen showing no signs of arch madness nervousness. Hustle play by the Braves there to create an opportunity. And Von Bray gets fouled. Nope, they're going to be offensive foul. Luke Von Bray has picked up his second personal and Richardson takes the charge. Oh, excellent defense by Richardson. Now Bray with a nice ball fake before the drive to open up the seam, but out of control. Richardson stands in there, feet outside the arc. Excellent play by the sophomore. Close to that arc line, but Richardson able to hold his ground. And then Von Bray, not only fighting illness, is fighting foul trouble. We talk about Loyola has scoring droughts. They're in one right now. They're running with a flat tire on this offense. Peterson. Rajala has four. His career high is seven, and that was a year ago. Well, that is the pickup that the Ramblers needed. James the bitch. Rajala with a big lift. And now a foul. Lodier Ogunleye 
called for the foul. Loyola's in the bonus. But athletic play here by the finish player needed. James the pitch. Ojala with a big lift. And now a foul. Lodier Ogunleye called for the foul. Loyola's in the bonus. But athletic play here by the finish player, Julius Rajala. Now the Braves have great balance. They've put five players have scored for the Bradley Braves in this game. Rajala with four. Make it five. And Porter Mosier is getting some badly needed minutes in production from Julius Rajala, the sophomore from Helsinki, Finland. And again, his career high is seven, and that was last year against Bradley. And look at Porter Mosier going, dude, I like it. You look like a Gideon Miscavige of Evansville out there. <laughs> the Big E. We'll see Rajala back in this game, but Montel James. In now at the post for Loyola. Thomas chasing down his own miss. Had a career high 13 rebounds against the Ramblers earlier this year. Well, we missed the youth of this Bradley team. On this team, the Arch Madness. Ex the experience they have is 61 total minutes and six points between Dante Thomas and Kadero Bell. Mark Whitehead will write a citation on Dante Ingram of the Ramblers. His first and just the third team foul on Loyola with 7.05 to go in the first 20. Again, Bradley, if you joined us late, hit their first five field goals. And a nice deep hook by Dante Thomas. He's got four. What well, excellent offensive play. It got Thomas isolated on the block. The lob over the top. And the jump hook. Quick straight man for Bradley. Richardson. A rare two. By the aforementioned scholar athlete of the game. And you watch Loyola, they will want put one on the offensive glass and send four back for defensive transition. Thomas kept that foot down, no walk. And James already working the boards hard in this first half. Well, Suggs started out knocking in a three ball, but he has missed his last two. But a three. And the Ramblers within a point. The concern for Coach Wardle was Turk getting hot. He shot 50% from three the last two weeks of the season at Turk. And he's the all-time Loyola University of Chicago three-point maker at 257 threes. But here's Pittman. Well, excellent offensive play. Pittman with four points. There are his two of those four. And now Turk coming off the bench. Splashing in the three ball. I'm sorry, Kevin. That was Dante Thomas who had the deep catch, but give Thomas and Pittman credit. A lot of work here by Bradley, and Thomas is going to the line for the Braves. And Thomas at 6'7, 215. He's the old man of the unit, a sophomore. So he's got uh, part of that six point, 60 minute total Arch Madness experience that the Braves bring in. He's had a good first half. He had 22 against Ole Miss. You give him another year of an offseason. Yeah, Brian Worrell talked about his freshman have gained weight through the season, which is rare. Their offseason weight program, you won't recognize these guys next fall. They'll put some muscle on. You've coached young teams before. How much does Brian Wardle go? Is there something I can do in the next three months to just keep playing with these guys? Find a tournament somewhere for a five-win team, because I'm sure he would love to keep teaching and playing with this young team. Mitch, today they had a high level, high energy level at their shoot around, and I've seen that in the games I've watched preparing for this. This is a team that is believing in what their head coach is selling. They're buying it. They're buying in. Now 
we've got a straight zone here from Bradley. Turks finding the gaps. Offline and deep that time for Turk. Boy, strong take. Lodier Ogunleye gets fouled. Well, that's one thing that D'Lo does. Lodier Ogunleye, he gets to the rim and gets fouled. The open court. He is excellent at finding seams. That big power. He's just a freshman, but he's 210. Not afraid to attack the inside of the defense. Milton Doyle struggling. He has three fouls, no points. And has to set now with 5.20 to go in the half. It's going to hurt an already short bench for the Ramblers. Tyson Smith out with a knee injury. And Earl Pearson playing, but with severe turf toe. Good pass, no catch for Scotty James. Turk, another deep NBA style three. The Rams have not gotten the ball inside, Mitch. They've settled for the outside jump shot. Bradley showed some zone, showed some man, but has kept Loyola from getting any interior penetration by the pass or the dribble. Ramblers two of nine from three-point range. Really selling right now. They've got to attack. And a turnover by Bradley. All right now, it's really the only cavity in their game. Because they're playing with effort, switching defense is doing an excellent job for Brian Wardle. But the turnovers right now have kept Loyola Chicago in the game. Well, they're averaging 17 turnovers a game, the Bradley Braves. That has been the problem with this young freshman group. Not uncommon for young players, but their defense has been solid. And I love Suggs at the top of this zone with his length. Now this was wings spread out. Pittman out there long. And they left Turk open that time. Another deep three, but they didn't close out quickly enough. Turk, who had 25 in a game earlier this year against San Diego and 30 last year against Missouri State, when he was zigging in threes like that. Well, he's Loyola's all-time leader outside the arc. If you're wearing a red jersey, you better find number four in white. Ramblers looking for the lead. White turns it over. White gets penetration, but then mishandles. Great job defensively at the rim. Turk has been finding the gaps in the seams as he's trying to assist per game, an assist to turnover margin. That's the sign of being the youngest team in the country. And they're only able to capitalize. They've got five points off those turnovers. The Ramblers have not held the Rock real well either. They've got five turnovers. Good recovery by Turk. And you know what? This was last touch. Bradley got a fingernail on this thing because Suggs thought he had a chance, and Turk recovers just in time, and it actually becomes another turnover for Bradley. That'll be number nine. Now we'll see what Bradley does on defense, and they're going to stick with the man-to-man. -man. Actually, it's again, it's a box and one on Turk. Pittman locked on the Turk. But that left James wide open inside, and Kelly Self has a foul. So the box and one, vulnerable, low, and James makes him pay. No question. If James is smart, he can find the gap inside on this box and one. Patience on the perimeter, they'll be able to find James. Reminder to stay tuned for a halftime report. It's a presentation of State Farm that reminds you. We exist to assist. Good to see John Altoff today at our coaches, our Coach of the Year luncheon, State Farm, the title sponsor of Arch Madness. Now, James at the free throw line for his third and fourth shot. He had a school record 18 free throws made against Indiana State. Yeah, that was a monster double double. He had 28 points and 14 rebounds against Indiana State. 
He's also third in the Valley in block shots, but he's only a mere 62 block shots behind the Gideon Swiscavages. Well, that was the game where Loyola won 104 to 96. They gave up 96 to Indiana State. Turn around the next game and held Northern Iowa at the McLeod Center to just 41 points. Been a Jekyll and Hyde that week for the Ramblers. And now another unforced turnover by this young Bradley squad. Loyola had a lead of one at 19.47 to go to start the game. And now they finally lead by two at 2.54 to go in the first half. And we talked about the key now was the value of the basketball. They start off red hot, the Bradley Braves, but now they've been kicking it around. They got to tighten up their ball handling. Brian Wolkins is very concerned that would be the issue in this game. Back to straight man again. An excellent job by Suggs. His length making it hard on Devin Turk. Suggs has had a good first half here for Bradley. Montbray's been quiet. They need to get that freshman going. And he's dealing with some sickness tonight. And there it is, a strong take to the rim. That's what Bradley was doing early in the game. And Pittman gets an end-one opportunity, slicing right to the circle. Well, a crossover move gets it right down Main Street in your living room, and then gets the clubhouse roll. See Pittman with five points and an assist. Here's another guy. I mean, he's 200 pounds, Mitch. These guards, Pittman, Modier, Magunglele, those guys are, they're men. Freshman, 18 year old, big shoulders, fearless. Pittman had 20 against Drake and a career high eight rebounds against Loyola University of Chicago earlier this year. So another good, smaller guy, but a good rebounding guard. This league has had many of them. One of the things that hurts Loyola is Earl Peterson is injured now. He's out there playing, but he's not in attack mode. White and the Peoria native hits a three, and that's big news. Four of 25 from three coming into the game for Peoria native Jeff White for Loyola. Well, good hands by the Ramblers. Great defense by Suggs and a foul on Peterson trying to get it back. How about the play of Ronnie Suggs hustling to defend the open floor? Oh, what an effort by the freshman. A turnover, but he also gets back and makes the stop. There's the loose ball scrum. Richardson with quick hands digs it out. And Suggs comes in there and cleans up the missed shot. Those are the effort things that Brian Worrell was talking about with those freshmen. Suggs a good foul shooter at 72%. That's his eighth point of this first half. And his defense has been equally impressive. Well, Brian Worrell made an interesting comment to me. He said he believes you can teach work ethic and you can teach effort. And that's one of the building blocks of this program. He originally committed to Mizzou. With the coaching change, then he decommitted. He's from Washington, Missouri. And Suggs with eight. And Pittman with eight to lead the Braves. There's that mid-range post-up. Deadly. Nine in the first half for Montel James. He's had to work hard to get all nine. Well, that's a tough move. That turn and face by James. If you come up too tight, he's going to try and blow by you. He has been ex First round games in Arch Madness. In fact, the nine seed has 13 of the 20 wins in the matchup against the eight seed. And we've seen that where a pesky nine seed is making it hard on the Ramblers.
Bell, and this would be big if he could hit it. Nice hustle play. Hanley chasing down the miss. But Richardson is sneaky. He's around the basketball all the time. Number 14 there with the ball in his hands, calling timeout. He was the under-recruited player on that Blue Valley Northwest team. Clayton Custer got all of the looks. And they beat Bradley two years ago in their first Arch Madness game ever when Milton Doyle hit a three at the buzzer. In that huge game last year where they put it on Indiana State and it propelled them into that CBI tournament where they became national champions. Richardson was big in that game you mentioned. He had 15 against Indiana State. 81-53. Greg Lansing put it on his locker room code all summer. The Sycamores had to push that number in to get into their locker room. How about Dante Thomas swatting it out of bounds? Three to shoot here for the Ramblers. 7-6 on the game clock. And if I'm Bradley, I would not lose track of the inbounder here, Richardson. It might be going right back to him, if he can get it in. Great job, Bradley. Lodier! Ogunleye! It will go! Tied at half! Double-double. Yep, now proudly presents the second half of our first game of Arch Madness. And Bradley will get the first crack in the second 20. And Loyola with more pressure. They came out pressure to just the inbound pass, trying to get their defensive tempo up. And Richardson swats that off the right shin of the Englishman. Richardson, his hands are so quick. We've seen times in the first half. Look at this. He dives in there, gets the hand off, and knocks it off the leg of Delo. Great defensive play by Ben Richardson. You see Peterson just a bit timid. He turned the corner, but he doesn't want to go all the way to the basket. Where Bradley's drawn a foul, John Higgins, if this is on Von Bray, it is his third foul. And Von Bray with the start in the second half for Bradley. And we saw the hard double. Coach Worrell said he was going to do that. Hey, the Valley Fan Hangout, perfect gathering place before or after games during Arch Madness. It's located at Bar pa Ballpark Village in downtown St. Louis, just across the street from Bush Stadium. For additional information, visit archmadness.com slash fans. A lot of you already know about it during Cardinal games. Men are a blast. It's the same during the Valley. Lots to do down there and take the family there. James missed his first free shot. After that, he's hit four in a row. Familiar sight. Number 24, that white jersey at the free throw line. And now, some pressure by the Ramblers. Lodier Ogunlele breaks the press and draws the foul. See how powerful and strong D'Lo is and fearless. Gets an advantage. He's going to take it right in there. How's going to be? They've had some excellent out of bounds plays on him. Yeah, not on the shot. It's kind of got Brian Wardle's attention. And now Lodier Ogunlele. Knocks it off of Richardson because he's going to avoid a five count. Well, Richardson's got his hands in there again. And there's a foul on Richardson. He bodied up on him that time. John Higgins was staring right at it. Yep, put his hands on his hips. Easy call for John Higgins. Same thing. They're going to try this again. This time, unintentional off of Richardson. Well, they're going to switch now and let Suggs throw it in. A little more height. Honey Suggs at 6'5". It's like Richardson's a centipede. Yeah. It's like, it's like it's got two more arms that we don't know about. Oh, there's an excellent take. The first points of the night by Luke Von Bray. 
Named to the Valley All-Freshman Team this week, Luke Von Bray. Well, how good is this, though? Body control and using the angle. It's six foot ten, bitch. Kiss it off the window. It's like Bradley straight zone, but they play that point at the top of the zone with Suggs out there. And look at the communication. Look at their pointing. They're all on the same page in this zone, trying to cover up the gaps. Richardson. Well, he won't miss many of those. Mm. Open look by Ben. Bradley just dodged the dart there. And they can take the lead. Thomas Launcher. Not his thing, just 27% out there, although he beat Loyola with a three in Chicago. Now we'll see what point in this game will Port Mosier bring Milton Doral back in with three fouls. And James defended and off James. Dante Thomas holds the fort. And the Ramblers turn it over. And there's your answer. Within seconds, here he comes. Milton Doyle. Four minutes in the first half. Three fouls. Milton Doyle got one shot up. And Milton Doyle is a talent. Again, the Ramblers with pressure. And Doyle almost had the steal, but Lodier, Ogunleye recovers. With Pittman, nowhere to go. And here comes Richardson. The sneaky Ben Richardson rejected. I'm telling you, Thomas is having a dice. And so is Suggs, but he can't convert. And a foul, though, on Loyola. Well, Thomas doesn't only block this and redirect it, he spikes it. Richardson thought he had one. And Doyle's picked up his fourth foul, Kevin, at 17.44 to go in the game. Zero points, four fouls for Milton Doyle. Well, that is not, that's worse than a bad day at the office. He's been on the court for a total of four and a half minutes. Got a Marshall High School in Chicago. And recently signed with Kansas. Transferred back home to Loyola. But he is trying to figure this out. He has had no fun tonight so far. Wait, and he's coming off a game where he had 20 points in an overtime loss at Drake. Suggs in double figures. He's got 10 and three of four at the line. And Bradley back on top by two. Stay in his own. Excellent communication. Well, it's got a 1 2 2 look, but matchup principles. Boy, Ingram slashing in the lane. And Thomas, who's been so good defending the rim for Bradley, has picked up his second foul. Well, Bradley has just made it really hard to score for the Ramblers. Well, we've talked about the defense. Look at they're, they're pointing, they're talking in the back. Barker is directing traffic impressed as you've got five freshmen and a four freshmen a sophomore with his great communication skills. Extra pass, Ingram in rhythm, a three. That time Loyola, perfect execution, and Ingram has his first field goal. And Earl Peterson knew right where that ball was going when it touched his hands. Gets it to Ingram for the open look. And Kevin, he was four of his last 21 from three prior to that triple. Well, we talked about the great defense of Bradley and the communication, but look at this ball movement by the team in white, the Ramblers, and it results in a three ball for Ingram. Well, has got another problem. They have three fouls on Ben Richardson. We talked about how active he has been defensively. And now he has to set for a while. And we got a long way to go on this one at 16.53. Also, if Bradley's going to zone, Richardson and Turf are the zone busters. 
great job by Thomas tipping in his own miss. Well, he's been impressive at the defensive end and on the offensive glass. Ingram will try it again. He had 14 at Southern Illinois in a road victory. Well, Ingram with back to back, starting to feel his groove a bit on the left baseline. So it sucks. The lefty's matching the lefty. Both teams playing a little more rhythm offensively here in the second half. Ingram's got the field. Dante Ingram, the pride of Simeon High School. Eight straight points for Dante Ingram. Two off the left baseline, then he's decided to test the waters from the right wing. And a foul, Mark Whitehead. Ingram has got 10 points. He's done a lot of ways. The oil hanging up by a deuce. Into the line will be Colin Barker. Another freshman on this Bradley team. He had 10 points and 9 rebounds in the win at Loyola, but only two points in the loss at Carver Arena in Peoria. And the big man from down under, Hobart, Tasmania, Barker. He's been excellent at directing traffic in the back of this defense for the Braves. But you the see Rams. him yakking the whole time. Ingram started the game 0 for 3, but he's 3 for his last 3, including two threes. Turk was just a bit of an open look as he curled off that down screen, but had to rush it. Boy, Pittman against White calling for it on a guard inversion. Well done by Brian Ward, and Pittman's got 10. Pittman with the ISO on the block. Just overpowered White. has changed 17 times in this game. Now he sees two Braves in front of him. That threw him off his rhythm. Well, Ingram really wanted He went down the block, then he got forced out. Good defense hand to face. Not a rhythm shot like the ones we saw him make earlier. Ingram's in a mud wrestling match with the Australian down and tried to get it inside of the Tasmania. There's Ingram in rhythm, but now he's testing fate. A little step in, good rhythm shot, but misfired by Ingram. Ingram with 10 for the Rams. And Von Bray comes back with his, his three fouls, and here comes Richardson, who brings his three fouls back to the floor. We've still got a long way to go. 14 minutes left in this one. Mitchell just with you, along with Kevin Lena. In St. Louis, and this is Arch Madness. Now Devin Turk is called with a little hand check out high. Well, neither team can grab a hold of this game right now. They're just kind of trading punches. That both have been excellent at the defensive end. There are no easy baskets. Bradley had that run at the beginning of the game, but since then, neither team has been able to string much together. And James really wants the ball to block. And Breeze with that three fouls and... Forcing the shot, Montel James. Obama Bray really held his ground, hard to the ceiling. Forced James away from his strong point, which is going over that left shoulder. The freshman, those are Sky Report. Von Bray missing from three. He's put up 125 of those this year. Turk wide open from three. Ingram chases it down. And Suggs had to grab it. 
But you see the speed there of Earl Peterson in that last possession. He is playing with an injured toe, but got it all the way to the rim before the kickout. They really need Earl Peterson's explosiveness. Didn't play against Drake, really hampered their production. Braves staying in that zone defense. Ingram attacks and gets the lay in with 12. I was just going to mention they couldn't get the ball to the honey spot in that spread out zone, but Ingram decides just to dribble inside. But kind of a four out one going, and he found the seam. A little ball reversal. And a big on big pass. And James will be called for the foul. Now here's the penetration. Ingram, you see him split the seam. He gets all the way to the rim. Marker can't get there in time. Ingram, big impact here in this game. He has got 12 points on the board. That little string where he hit those three in a row. And that nice drive there splitting the defenders. Well, you look at Suggs, you look at Lodier Ogunleye, and then you look at this kid. And you think Bradley has got something working for the future. Well, well, great. And throw a Pittman in there in the south for Thomas. Barker's just a freshman also. Ten freshmen on this squad. One of the youngest in the nation. Peterson goes at Von Bray. And James. Able to work his magic underneath. He gets seven rebounds a game, and right now, he is again looking at a double-double. One more rebound, he'll have it. That one was all effort as James came from the weak side. He just muscled his way to the basketball. Barker has the foul, his third, and it kept Von Bray from getting his fourth. James' string of five straight free throw makes comes to an end. James again played at Coffeyville Community College. The Jayhawk Junior College League has produced so many great players for Division I basketball and many players for the Valley down through the years. Improvement from last year. James on the all newcomer team this year. The second team, all Valley, to improve his numbers all the way across the board. How are you going to make first team in this league? Wes Washburn couldn't make it. There, there's no room. Isn't that amazing? We had the Mount Rushmore today at the banquet when you look at Miscavichus and Valentine and Baker and Van Vliet, and then you throw in you throw in Bean of Southern Illinois. I mean, there's no, there's not enough spots. Washburn, Britton Scott, the only underclassman on that first and second team that Valley released. Rajala is giving this team good minutes tonight. Barker had to do something. The shot clock was running out. Rajala, huge lift in the first half for Loyola. He's continued here in the second half. Jeff White, tough angle. Jeff White using the screen for Rajala. Just a little hesitation for White. Didn't able to finish. Lodier of Inlea missing the three. He hit the three at the buzzer and the half. Richardson attacks on Pittman. Well, Ingram is doing all he can for Loyola with 12 points. The Reds share a, a love for the Cardinals. Bradley has turned it over 16 times. And just three assists has led to 11 points off turnovers for the Ramblers. That was the concern going into this game for Brian Wardle. We've got to be able to handle the basketball better. Thomas called for goaltending. Turk gets the bucket. Okay, danger zone here for Bradley because nobody's been able to string anything together yet, but Loyola's sniffing that. And you can see the defensive intensity step up by Loyola. 
for the glass. James clears it. High low, swatted away, but now a foul is going to be called underneath. John Higgins calls the foul on Lodier Ogunleye, his second. It's gone back and forth. Nobody can grab a hold of it. 18 lead changes, six ties. Ingram making his presence felt here in the second half for the Ramblers. And hits the front end of a one and one. Both teams now in the first bonus. They're getting him a good foul line shooter. 82%. But during the regular season, the one team he could not do it against was Bradley. 7 of 12 at the line in the two games against Bradley during the regular season. And all of a sudden, the first time either team has had distance. The Ramblers, their biggest lead at 7. And Ingram's got 12 of his 14 points in the second half for the Ramblers. He has really exerted himself. And how good of a job is Pittman going to the glass? That's how Bradley got things started in this game. And Von Bray's going, what a minute. Why am I out here guarding White? Now they get it switched. Turk over Pittman drains it. Oh, that was a tough shot. Well contested. Excellent defense. Better offense. 259 made threes by Turk, the best in Rambler history, and enough for Brian Wardle to take time. Loyola did this the first year they came down here. Said, we need something distinctive to set our fans and student body. And so the scars have become part of the St. Louis landscape during Arch Madness. A danger area for Bradley here as they are trailing by eight. They need a basket on this possession. Von Bray might have walked, but still works. Oh, the spin move, high degree of difficulty for the man from the Netherlands, Luke Von Bray. How good with his feet on that? I'd like to see a replay of this. It looks like he traveled, but I don't think he did. Peterson gets hooked on the way to the basket. Oh, we're going to take a good look at this freshman. All freshman team, Luke Van Bray. Left pivot foot down. Picked her up. Good call, bitch. It's tonight's Eagle Eye video replays of presentation of Eagle Bank and Trust Company, the official bank of the Valley. Also proud to sponsor the Missouri Valley Conference student athletes. Eagle Bank, where a student's financial future begins. And again, Reed Timmer of Drake was announced as our Eagle Bank and Trust Company, Missouri Valley Conference Scholar Athlete of the Year. And Peterson will go to the line. Again, both teams are in the bonus. Peterson, though, 0 for 2 tonight, has yet to score. How about Peterson and Doyle, both blanked. Now he's having a rough night. And a tip out by James. Excellent move by James. Keep the possession alive. That will drive Brian Wardle crazy. Drives all coaches crazy, Mitch. Back-to-back -back possessions. And then the three ball by Richardson. You get a missed front end of a one and one, and it ends up being a three point trip for Loyola. And Wardle just shaking his head. Those are the fundamental things that can be cleaned up. Contact. White goes down hard, and James cleans up the board. Double double time again for Montel James. And James is the guy who put White down, his teammate. James with the tip out of the last possession, then clearing the glass at the defensive end. Four straight games now. Montel James has had 10 rebounds. Well, look at him on the free throw line. That was just a mistake by Thomas not blocking out. And they paid dearly as Richardson drains the triple. But how hard is for James to do that without fouling? Moscovich has made it a, I mean, he's made it an art form. Able to tip it out using his athleticism without having contact. 
Now, Ames has been at the free throw line so much that Valley may consider charging him rent, but has not converted at a high rate to six and nine. And he said he came into this game 75% free throw shooter after only shooting 52% from the line last season. And all of a sudden, this has become a double digit game. Bradley has fought their guts out, and they stared a 10 point deficit because of the turnovers. But that three ball, that tip out of the three ball by Richardson was huge. James is just owning the window. And he's headed for 20 rebounds. He keeps this up. 13 and 13 for Montel James, the senior from Kenner, Louisiana. Nice job. Lodier Ogunleye gets his first second half basket. Lodier Ogunleye with that huge three to end the half. But he's had a dry spell since then. Again, this game had 18 lead changes, and finally the Ramblers getting a little distance. And now trying to manage it here down the stretch. But Von Bre has other ideas. Suggs trailing. Look out. And that all started by Von Bray's anticipation and quick hands, and it leads to a three ball for the tournament in the Quad Cities for the first time. For more information, visit NBCQuadCities.com. The Quad Cities, and Kevin, you know it well, a great tradition of women's basketball history there. Oh, no question. A beautiful arena that they will play that tournament in. Doyle back in the game for the Ramblers. And he gets fouled by Suggs. Little weave action right out of the timeout by Porter Mosier. And it's double bonus the rest of the way for the Loyola Ramblers. Doyle averages 12. He has yet to register in the scorebook tonight. His fouls have equaled his minutes. Four fouls in four minutes for Doyle, the junior. It's more relief for him to get that free shot down. Part of that big bench production from the Ramblers is from Milton Doyle. And they spent a good portion of February leading the nation in bench points. Yeah, that shakeup, very successful. Wow, how about Bradley? Excellent cuts. With and without the ball to get an easy two for Dante Thomas. And Dante Thomas now has a double-double. His fourth this year in Valley play. Ingram, another three. His third of the night. And he came in. 20 of 77 at 26 percent and hit four of his last 20. He has knocked in three threes tonight. A new career high for Dante Ingram, 17 points. Both Ingram at the offensive end and Montel James clean up the rebounds at the defensive end. They're trying to will their team to victory. They went to the monitor because the contact was above the shoulders. But it was a play on here after the free throws. And James is having quite a night. Look at the foul situation. We're headed for casualties. Still 5.48 to go. Now, Loyola's done an excellent job of handling theirs because Doyle and Richardson were setting on those four and three fouls respectively at about the 16-minute mark. So they've handled it. The fouls are manning, though, for mounting for Bradley. Yeah, Porter Mosier maneuvered it through the first half. 
He's managed it well here in the second half. And Pittman with four fouls back in the game for Bradley. 14 points, 14 rebounds for Montel James. And he plays well, Mitch. The Ramblers win games. Cadero Bell. The 15th rebound by James. Has got a little bit of a mismatch. James deep on Bray. No match. James may have got away with a little push off there with his left arm, but until James socks in the box. Look at this early footwork by the senior. A little roll. Steps back in there to watch. Anthony Bean would be player of the year most other years. And like you said, the West Washburn, no room for the senior from Northern Iowa. That is a loaded group. And Valentine, fourth in Valley history in scoring. The three players ahead of him, Larry Bird, Oscar Robertson, and Hershey Hawkins, combining for 40 years in the NBA. Wouldn't you love to be associated with those three names? Oh. And the big O, Bird. And how about Hershey Hawkins from the Bradley Braves? An incredible group of seniors in this league and really around the country this year. Foul on Loyola. Good hustling. Good hustle play by Dante Thomas. And, and look at what the Valley has done. They've got three 22 plus win teams in this tournament. It's never happened in Arch Madness. And a trendy Northern Iowa that's trending upward. Winning 10 of their last 11. Richardson has drawn his fourth foul, so he's in a precarious spot. And still with 4.22 to go, but Porter Mosier looks like he's going to keep him on the floor and take Ingram out of the game. The Ingram, we're going to put that hand in an ice bucket to cool it off. 15 second half points for Dante Ingram and the Ramblers. He's like, I hit three threes, man. James, excellent job of rim running on that possession. Richardson. Just enough defense. Five on Bray. Nice job. Lodier Ogunleye. Oh, Mitch, second field goal. Second you half. talked about him playing in a league in London with older players. You can see the result. Look out. The Loyola University Chicago Ramblers cannot put away the Bradley Braves. And let's be honest. Loyola has had trouble this year, Kevin, at times, putting games away. And this is a Bradley team that believes. They are believers. They couldn't put Drake away in Des Moines. In, on Saturday, they lost in overtime. They had the lead late and could not finish off the Drake Bulldogs. Ooh, James goes down hard. Now look at these. From his upperclassmen. Until James is doing it on the court. This is the 13th free throw tonight for Montel James. He's 8 of 12. And the Ramblers himself have been there 24 times. This will be the 25th trip to just 15 for the Braves. They made 34 free throws in that crazy over double overtime game against Indiana State. They outscored Bradley by seven at the line in their road win in Peoria over BU. And the heavy lifting done by this young man, Montel James. It's game on, brother. Two free throw misses in a two possession game and still plenty of time. Pittman against Doyle. On Brian, there's a foul. 
Yes, this will go against Ingram. Well, that was a possession that was starting to look ugly. And Pittman made some things happen. And Bob Bray went in there hard on the offensive blast. Big possession for the Braves. Now, Bradley is still in the first bonus. Let's see if John Higgins, they call this a two shot foul or one and one. Look at the different in hands here for Von Bray. And Brian Wardle told Tom Ackerman that he just kind of playing through his illness. How high was James on that miss? Von Bray has missed three free throws tonight. 16th rebound by Montel James. And that was one of the keys for the Ramblers. They have to beat glass eaters today. A sweet 16 16 for Montel James. Points and rebounds. Doyle's got a pull. Excellent defense possession by Bradley. On Bray trying to create offensive foul. Big call against Luke Von Bray. And who's in there? The senior, Mattel James. He's been cleaning the glass. Now he keeps his feet on the floor. There goes the freshman. James there in plenty of time. That is picture perfect charge. Hands to the ceiling. Feet outside the arc. James taking it to another level tonight. One Bray now with four fouls. But Bradley keeps defending the Ramblers, but they cannot get a three possession lead. They got these long arms, it makes their press very effective. And Loyola has not been able to finish at the end of the press. Pittman is down. Antoine Pittman appears to be hurt. And he madness at its best, Mitch. What an unbelievable play by Ben Richardson. the clock. Peterson, that's his first points of the night. He has been quiet. We talked about the toe injury. Nothing bigger than that triple. And an 11-point lead. And Bradley gets fouled on a three. Milton Doyle has fouled out of the game at 51.9 seconds. And it'll be three shot appointment. Teammate Jeff White put his arm around him. He can survive the next 51.9. They will live to play another day. I talked with Porter Mosier throughout this season. What did the CBI championship run do for them in a tournament setting? Now, can they finish this? But how about the laboratory, though? Evansville and the winning the CIT and these guys winning the CBI. How much does that help you in this kind of setting? Oh, no question. The experience, because they're all one and dones. You lose, you go home. That's what I'm saying. I wish there was somewhere Bradley to go play. These guys could use another six weeks of ball. An excellent time for Brian Wardle to take them on a summer tour. Now Turk, he gets tied up. The arrow is Loyola's. That's still 49-2 to go in the game. And Loyola hasn't liked this press much. Well, you throw it in the corner. Well, his vision sucks now. He puts 10, 15 pounds of muscle on that upper body. That long reach. He's going to be an outstanding player in this league. Now Richardson throws it away, but Peterson chases down the Aaron hot potato. And now Peterson takes a shot to the face. And Rola has been loose with this basket. 
Again, enters this tournament, Kevin, with 117 career wins. Just three behind the all-time Valley record of his old teammate, Takeo Cotton. Three-time MVT, NBC first teamer, Fred Van Fleet. And Van Fleet down early with that hamstring injury. Comes back, Wichita State cruises through the valley. 16 wins. Boy, I had him on a Sunday at Evansville where the Purple Aces were all fired up, and he went for 32 on the road. The bigger the game, the better he plays. They love the big stage. Thomas has had a nice night's work. And Bradley will not so but they have blended in nicely. The biggest thing though, Mitch, they're believers. Yep, you can see it in their eyes. They believe they believe in their staff. And competing. They're five and twenty-six and came in here competing as if they were playing this game to go to the NCAA tournament. Impressive. Well, we saw the blueprint work at Green Bay for Brian Wardle. Now he's going to use the same built blueprint to build a program for the Bradley Braves. I'll tell you what else. If you're a Bradley fan, watch and take a bow. They were second in the league in attendance. Wichita State led the league in attendance. Second, Bradley Braves, a team that was 5-26. and 26. It tells you about the fan level of the Bradley Braves and the great basketball history in the city of Peoria. Ingram's had a career night tonight, Kevin. 19 points. Boy, he has been huge. 17 in the second half. He really changed the game when he had that run of eight straight points, two threes and a two. Cadero Bell, the surviving senior of this team. Think about how he has been through in his Bradley career, and yet he's playing here in his final game. And Bell has fought injuries throughout his four years at Bradley. The only upperclassman on the active roster, Cadero Bell. Bell called on Joel Okafor. In free throws here. For Jeff White, a senior again who went to Manuel High School in Peoria and playing his fourth year for the Loyola University Ramblers. And Manuel has this great tradition, not only in basketball, but in all sports. And White going against his father's alma mater, Charles White, for Bradley. I think 89 to 93. Suggs gets fouled in the worst of all worlds for Loyola. Now Bradley again can chip into this. It's still 12.1, and they get to try to score with the clock stop. And their pressure has caused problems for the Ramblers. Great length on the front. And here's the thing, Kevin. If Loyola can hang on to this victory, and tomorrow, guess what they're going to see tomorrow at noon against Wichita State? Pressure. Pressure. Lots of it. In different kinds. Well, they're going to need Milton Doyle at full strength tomorrow. He obviously will have fresh legs. Very few minutes tonight for Doyle. Well, some other guys stepped up though tonight for Porter Mosier. And James has been outstanding. And an offensive rebound after two free throw misses. And Brian Warren telling his team, get on the free throw line, we're going to do the same thing again. Run a stunt on that missed free throw and got the rebound back. Thomas, 5 of 5 at the line tonight. 14 points. Again, he had 22 against Ole Miss earlier this year. They had a tough non conference schedule. For a young team. And Porter Mosier just wants to get the ball down to his end of the court. They almost got another one. James cleared it. And Brian Wardle saying, if we've made some of these free throws, this thing would be really interesting. Brother, 
And Montel James will go to the line with his 18 points and his 17 rebounds. Well, he's been impressive with 17 rebounds, but look at Bradley as a team. 41 rebounds to just 31 for the Ramblers. But it's been the 19 turnovers, Mitch, have been the issue yep. for the Braves. Not only this game, but all season long. They just doomed him in this game. They had a real shot at winning this. And I thought Brian Wardle had a very good game plan for this game. Switched up some defense, a little boxing one, some full court pressure. Offensively, they spread the court, were able to attack the seams. Start off strong, five for five as they got to the rim. Well, Loyola University of Chicago is going to advance. Three straight years in Arch Madness, they've won their initial game. 